All right, guys, happy Tuesday. Um, this is Miss Lastly and Miss Markert, and we are here for day number 12, solving solving three by three systems of equations. So these are gonna be equations with three variables, and you have to have three um, of the equations. Otherwise, you can't solve. Um, so this should be really similar to yesterday. Very quick video. So I'm going to turn it over to Miss Markert, and she's going to show you guys how to handle um, three by three by three systems. Cool. Um, yeah, this should be a super quick video. Um, hopefully, if you understood what was happening yesterday, um, this will be super easy. Um, so we have a couple things to remind you about, and then I'm going to do an example, and that will be it for today. So, um, okay, the first thing I want to re remind you of, so like we did yesterday, we have three matrices that we're going to be working with. We have the coefficient matrices, the variable matrices, matrix, and the solution matrix. Um, so remember that the variables are a column, and so are the solutions, they're just a column. And coefficients go in row by row. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, we'll do an example and hopefully it will make more sense. Um, the other thing I want to remind you of that's super important is putting a zero in when you don't have, when you have missing variables. Um, so as we can see on this third equation here, we don't have a coefficient for z. And so we need to put in a zero where that coefficient would go. Um, so just put zeros in for missing variables. Um, you guys have done that before. You've done it for the um, long division that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. Synthetic. Synthetic division, thank you. <laughs> I can picture it, but I could not remember the name, whatever. Um, you've done that before for other things, so that shouldn't be anything too new, um, but this is a case where you do need to do that. Um, and the last thing I wanna remind you of is just remember to watch out for the order in which you multiply your, ma your inverse matrix. Um, yeah, remember to remember order for multiplying inverse matrix. Okay, so then all we have to do is an example and then we should be good to go. Um, so just like yesterday, we're gonna create three matrices. Like I said earlier, we're gonna create the coefficient matrix and that's gonna end up being a three by three matrix because we have three variables in three equations. And remember, we're just taking all those um, coefficients and we're just putting them into a matrix. We're not changing the order. We're not doing anything to them. We're just taking them and putting them in a matrix. So we have negative four, negative three, two, negative five, negative three, four, four, y, and then, oop, no, one, not y, one. And then because we don't have a Z there, we're gonna put in a zero. So that would be one of our missing variables. Um, and then we're gonna create our variable matrix and we're just gonna go X, Y, Z. So you take all your variables and you just put them into a nice little column like that. And then equal to your solution matrix. So three, six, nine, just like that. Um, and then just like yesterday and just like um, last week when we, were, when we were solving equations with matrices, you're going to find the inverse of your coefficient matrix here. Uh, we'll name it A. So we need to find A inverse. So we're going to end up with A inverse times A e times your coefficient, your variable matrix, X, Y, and Z. And then a inverse, I cannot, sorry guys, A inverse, three, six, and nine, just like that. Um, for sake of writing and for sake of time, I'm not gonna write out the whole huge thing because there's a lot of, a lot of numbers to write. Um, 
But if you guys are curious, I don't have any of those metrics right now, but that's okay. Um, remember, you can do this, you need to do this all in your calculator. Um, so you put in your matrix in second, and then the X to the negative one button, you hit, you scroll over to the edit, you select the matrix that you want, and then you put in all your information. Remember to put in the matrix row by row. Um, and then when you find the inverse of A, you can store it as another matrix. Just remember which one you stored it as, and that will make multiplying um, this section a lot easier. Um, and then once you do that, you end up with X, Y, and Z over here, and three, negative three, three as your solution. So your solution would be three, negative three, and three, just like that. Cool. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Yeah. Yeah, remember guys, um, this is mostly being done in your calculator. If you need a refresher on how to put this into your calculator, you can watch our video from last Wednesday, or you can go online. There's tons of videos on how to do matrices in your calculator. But yeah, this is definitely not something you're doing by hand. Um, and like Ms. Margaret said, just remember to multiply your inverse matrice on the right um, like side, I guess. Um, but for ones like these, if you were to multiply in an incorrect order, you wouldn't get an answer. It would throw an error message. So if you're getting error messages when you're putting these into your calculator, the reason probably is coming from the fact that you're multiplying in the wrong order. So try switching your matrices around um, because these ones, it wouldn't even let you multiply. Like if you had swapped your solution matrix and your inverse and did it in the other order, your calculator would say error, invalid dimension. Um, which is just your clue that you're doing it in the wrong order. So just try again. Uh, but yeah, that is it. So um, these things are really a pain in the butt to solve by hand. You can do it. It's nothing that you guys are incapable of. You would basically use kind of a tedious um, elimination process. Basically, the goal is to get um, one equation to have only one variable. So you end up with an equation. Usually it's, it's the bottom one and you get it to be just as Z equals a number. And then the next equation, you would get it so that it only has two variables in it. And then the top equation, you can keep all three. That way you can use substitution to kind of go up and solve the thing. Um, but it is very tedious to do by hand. So matrices makes this a whole lot easier. Um, yeah, so if anybody wants to actually give it a try doing it by hand, feel free. I know some of you guys are really bored out there. Um, so this is definitely something that you can solve by hand, three equations, three variables. Um, but matrices makes it like, like you guys just saw. Like this is just plugging matrices into your calculator and you can get your solutions pretty fast. Um, I guess the other way would be it's a combination of elimination and then what we call bags back substitution which is kind of, I mean, it's not impossible. You guys can do it. You could do it in algebra one. You learn the skills. It's just a long process. Um, but yeah, so that is it for today. So we are really almost done with matrices. The last thing we're going to do tomorrow is give you guys an example of having to create the three different equations um, and then using matrices to go ahead and solve for your three variables. Um, but really that's it. So truthfully, tomorrow isn't really a matrix day. It's more of something that we wanted to cover in sequences, but we didn't really have the tools yet because I didn't want you guys to have to solve three system, three equation um, problems when we were doing sequences in series. So we kind of skipped it um, and now we're kind of bringing it back. So really we're done with matrices. Tomorrow is just like an application day. So it shouldn't be too rough. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool sequence that we're going to look at. So I'm excited about it, but yeah, after tomorrow, we're pretty much done with new material for the rest of the school year. Uh, next week is going to be all review. So it's a good week for those of you who kind of took a couple weeks off. Cause I've, I've noticed some of the checkpoints haven't been done, um, as much as they usually are. Um, but that's okay. So for those of you that took a couple weeks off to kind of do AP testing and like maybe your other classes had like a lot of work. Next week is really going to be a good week to kind of pop back up. Um, next Friday is June 5th. So that's kind of like our 
soft deadline to try and make sure you have everything done for the class. Uh, we'll get more into that next week, but just kind of want to let you know, we really are almost done with this stuff. Um, and you guys are kind of almost there, right? It's almost there. Uh, but yeah, so that is it for today's video and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys.